Let's turn out to the practical issues. There is a lot of patients with Parkinson's. A lot have silaria. You have to, we talked about how you might identify a patient and decide who to treat and perhaps what to use to treat them with. But then what? How does a neurologist who wants to treat silaria with botulinum toxin injection go about doing that? Do they have to block a certain day? What do you do? Do you have a certain day you inject? Do you do it at the end of the visit that you identify it? Uh, how do you go through the logistics of, of these? Well, it's actually very quick. It, it probably adds a couple of minutes to my visit, uh, not much. Um, if I'm noticing or have a conversation with the patient that they're drooling during my regular uh, visit, I'll say, I, I notice you're drooling, we'll have a discussion. Uh, I offer them a treatment if, if it's appropriate for them. And if they elect to have it, I can step out, I can drop a mile block, come back in the room and accomplish it by adding maybe three, four minutes to the visit. And so I, I don't have to schedule that as a separate visit. Um, but then they will be back in three months and that will be scheduled as a separate visit. And it's not gonna take a whole lot of time. It's a fairly short visit. Uh, for most patients, I'm not doing submandibulars. I'm just doing parotids. So I put the ultrasound gel on, I find the gland, I inject, I have a chair that swirls, I turn it around, I do the same on the other side. It doesn't take very long. So logistically, it's not uh, much of a hassle. Um, and for a lot of physicians, they should consider this as a billable procedure as well. Um, that may actually help their practice. So because it's a separate identifiable service, both the visit and injection could be paid on the same day by right. most insurance carriers. Right, so the EM code is, is covered under uh, G20, which is Parkinson's disease, and the procedure is done for K117, which is salaria. And so it can be done at the same time. Do you have the patient sitting in a chair when you do this, or do you have to make them lie down on a table? Yeah. We just come back in the room with the needle and wherever they're sitting, that's where you... So I found the perfect chair. It's a, a chair with, that swivels but doesn't have wheels because you don't want to have to hit a moving target. Right. So it, it sits there. So I line up my ultrasound on the left. Uh, the patient is maybe sitting away from me or towards me. I inject one side. I rotate them. I inject the other side without having to move my ultrasound machine. So you bring them to a separate room for this? Um, well, actually, I, uh, I have that chair in each room. Oh. So uh, I have two ultrasound machines. I generally work out of two rooms, and I can do it in either room. I, I tend to have the medical assistant with me, um, or I open the door and call for her, and then they'll go and bring the ultrasound machine in if I want to use it, and I'll bring in the myoblock, and we draw it up. And I'll have them in a regular chair and just swivel my chair okay. to one side so, and so then you, to the other side. So you do one side, and you and then do the other side. The other side. Yeah. So it's worked out pretty easily to incorporate it throughout the day in any patients who have silaria, um, we offer to do it and, and then as part of the visit, at the end of the visit when it ends, we just inject them and then they go on their way. They don't need any observation, so it's uh, been able to add that service and not make them come back. And how much time do you think it adds to your visit? Uh, probably three or four minutes, uh, certainly not more than five minutes. Right. And probably a minute or two, if, uh, uh, for, especially for patients who are being re-injected or have considerable saliva, often the medical assistant or nurse will raise it during the history and say, you know, we have a treatment for that. If you're interested in it, they'll actually bring it into the room. So when I come in, it's already there. And then when I talk to the patient, if they want it, we can just draw it up as we're finishing the visit and as the prescriptions are going through and, um, and inject them right there. Um, so I think it's been a very simple procedure um, for, for our patients. It's nice to be able to treat not only the motor symptoms, but also some of the important non-motor symptoms. And this has always right. been a problem that's in the top three or four non-motor symptoms that patients point to as impacting their daily lives. So being able to address that proactively, I think adds value to the patient's uh, clinic visit. I agree. I think when time is limited, people tend to have blinders on and they're thinking just about motor symptoms. And disability is really predictable more by non-motor, what's happening there. And this is one that may lead to aspiration pneumonia, which is still the most common cause of death in PD. And so it's not one we want to miss, particularly since we can intervene. And it's a simple procedure and actually very safe for people.